Hello, in this video we're going to use the midpoint method to calculate the price elasticity of demand using four examples. So in problem one, the quantity demanded increases from 8 to 12 from a price decrease from 5 to $3. We want to solve for the price elasticity of demand using the midpoint formula. So instead of showing the formula, I'm going to break it down into small pieces. And this is a three-step process to solve the price elasticity of demand. Step one, we're going to calculate the increase in the quantity demanded. So quantity demanded goes from 8 to 12. So we're going to calculate the increase in quantity demanded and then divide that result by the average of the two quantities. So the increase in the quantity demanded, 12 minus 8, is 4. Quantity demanded increased by 4. And the average quantity demanded, the average of these two numbers, 8 plus 12 is 20, divided by 2, we get this simple average of 10. And then as I mentioned here, we're going to divide this 4, we're going to take this 4 and divide it by 10. So 4 divided by 10 equals 0 0.5. So that's step 1. Step 2, we're going to do a similar thing, but this time for the price. So since quantity demanded increases, it means the price fell. So we're going to calculate the decrease in price and then divide it by the average of those two prices. So price fell here, and we get a minus $2 uh, decrease in the price of minus 2. So just 3 minus 5. And then the average price, 3 plus 5 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. And then finally, minus 2 divided by 4 is minus 0 0.5. And we're almost done. The final step, step 3, we're just going to take the result in step 1 and divide it by the result in step 2. So step 3, take your answer in step 1 and divide it by your answer in step 2. So we get the price elasticity of demand in this problem of minus 0 0.8. Moving on, problem two, the quantity demanded decreases from 100 to 80 from a price increase from $400 to $410. We're going to follow the steps. We're going to calculate, in this case, the decrease in quantity demanded and then divide it by the average of the two quantities. So quantity demanded fell here. So we got minus 20, 80 minus 100. We get the average quantity demanded, 100 plus 80 is 180, divided by 2 is 90. And then a little division here, minus 20 divided by 90 is minus 0 0.22. And for step 2, we're just going to calculate the increase in price. It's going to be a $10 increase, and divide it by the average of the two prices. So the increase in price, 410 minus 400 is $10. The average price is just going to be 405. And 10 divided by 405 is 0 0.025. And now in our final and third step, we're going to take minus 0 0.22 and divide it by 0 0.025. and we get a price elasticity of demand of minus 8.8. .8. This would be elastic demand, by the way, since this result in absolute value exceeds 1. Let's move on to our next problem. Use information in the table to calculate the price elasticity of demand between a price of 5 and $7. So here's our table, price and quantity demanded. And we want to see what happens here uh, between a price of 5 and $7 to calculate the price elasticity of demand. So we're going to just follow those steps. We can look at the increase in quantity over this range, going from 60 to 100. That is a 40-unit increase in the quantity demanded. And then the average quantity, the average of 160, is just 80. And taking one number and dividing it by the other, we get 0 0.5 in step 1. In step 2, to get this increase in the quantity, price had to fall. So we have a minus 2 here for the decrease in price or the change in price. 
The average price is going to be $6. The average between 5 and 7 is 6. And then we see we get minus 0 0.333. And then finishing this up, the price elasticity of demand will be minus 1.5. This is also elastic demand since this coefficient, ignoring the minus sign, exceeds 1. If you wanted to, you could have talked about, uh, we could have re sort of reversed this. Instead of having an increase in quantity, we could have labeled it a decrease in quantity. So you would have had a minus 40 here, and then you would have had an increase in price of plus 2. So it doesn't really matter whether this minus sign shows up. Uh, you're going to get the same result. So again, once again, we could have looked at this as a decrease in the quantity and an increase in price. You would have had the same answer of minus 1.5. We're going to look at this demand curve. You can ignore the supply curve. We're going to just look at this demand curve, and we're going to calculate the price elasticity of demand between a price of $20. At $20, a quantity is 8,000. Quantity demanded is 8,000. And a price of $40, the quantity demanded is 6,000. So just following those steps again, we can think about this as an increase in quantity going from 6 to 8,000. That is a 2,000 unit increase. The average quantity, the average of 8,000 and 6,000 is 7,000. And then doing the division here, we get 0 0.286. And to get the increase in quantity, it means the price fell. So the decrease in price here is minus 20. The change in price is minus 20. The average price, the average of 20 and 40 is 30. And then we get here, after the division, minus 2 thirds or minus 0 0.67. And in our last step, we see that the price elasticity of demand is minus 0 0.43. This would be an, uh, an indication of inelastic demand when this price elasticity of demand is less than 1 in absolute value. <clears throat> Ignoring the minus sign, we have inelastic demand. All right, that's my examples. I hope you found this video helpful.